Find a singular point of the rational function f of z equals z over z minus 2y. So at a singular point, the function is not differentiable. Now, in, for a rational function, the function is not even defined at the point or complex number that makes the denominator 0. So you can see that when z equals 2y, the denominator is 0. So the function isn't even defined, which means that it's not certainly not differentiable at z equals 2y. Now, it is differentiable everywhere else, which actually means that the function is analytic everywhere except at the complex number 2i. Let's get the derivative of this function. Well, we see that we apply the quotient rule here. We have a quotient of functions. So um, we take the denominator z minus 2i, multiply by the derivative of the numerator, differentiate the numerator with respect to z to get 1. Then we have a minus sign. And after that, we have the numerator, which is z times the derivative of the denominator, which is 1. And we div divide the whole lot by the denominator squared. So the z's cancel here. We get minus 2i over z minus 2i squared. We want the derivative at minus i. So we just plug minus i in for z. Minus i minus 2i is minus 3i. If we square that, we get plus 9i squared. That's plus 9 by minus 1 or minus 9. So we end up getting 2 ninths i. So we see that the derivative can come out to be a complex number. Next example, show that the function f of z equals z squared plus z is analytic everywhere and hence obtain its der derivative. Well, we saw in previous videos that a function is analytic everywhere if it satisfies the Cauchy-Riemann equations. And it's got to satisfy the Cauchy-Riemann equations everywhere for all values of x, y, for all points or complex numbers z equals x plus i, y. Okay, uh, we need to find out what u and v are. So we need to get f of z, where z is x plus i, y, a general complex number. So we have to square it and add it on z. So um, we saw before that the real part of this is x squared minus y squared. Just square both of these. And the imaginary part is 2xyi. So now we gather the terms that don't involve i together. That's x squared plus x minus y squared. And then the terms that do involve i are 2xy plus y. So this here is u. And this here is v. OK, so u is x squared plus x minus y squared. And uh, we know the first Cauchy-Riemann tells us that du dx equals dv dy. So again, u comes before v, like in the alphabet. So u comes before v up here, and x comes before y. So that's a way to remember this equation. So let's see if this is true. Well, differentiating u with respect to x gives us, us 2x plus 1. Uh, if you differentiate v with respect to y, we also get 2x plus 1. So du dx is indeed equal to dv dy. To get the second Cauchy-Riemann equation, we just interchange x with y. So we have a y here, and this y is replaced with x, and we just stick a minus sign in front of one of them. Well, here's du dy, it's minus 2y. Uh, dv dx is plus 2y. So we can see that minus 2y is equal to minus this quantity. So this is true. Now, both Cauchy-Riemann equations are satisfied for all x and y. So for all points in the plane. So that means that uh, f of z is analytic everywhere. df dz is just 2z plus 1. We showed in previous videos that df dz is the same as the partial derivative of f with respect to x. So we could also get it from this if we write our function like this and just get the partial derivative of this thing here with respect to x. We actually get uh, this expression here. And uh, you can see that that's the same as 2z plus 1, where z equals x plus i, y. But it's easiest just to get df dz directly from this form here, f of z equals z squared plus z. In the third example, we want to show that the function u equals x squared minus y squared minus 2y is harmonic. We showed in the previous video that if a function u is harmonic, then it satisfies Laplace's equation. So we need to calculate these derivatives. So we need to get du dx. Well, that's easy. If 
we differentiate this with respect to x, we just get 2x. And uh, if we get the second derivative of u with respect to x, if we differentiate 2x with respect to x, we get plus 2. Now we also need to get du dy. Well, if we differentiate this with respect to y, we get minus 2y minus 2. The second derivative of u with respect to y will just give us minus 2. So what will this give us here? Well, this is 2 and this is minus 2. 2 plus minus 2 is indeed 0. So we can see that u satisfies Laplace's equation. That means that u is harmonic. Next we want to find the conjugate harmonic function v. Now, so um, the conjugate harmonic function v has the property that f of z equals u plus iv is analytic. If the function f is analytic, then u and v must satisfy the Cauchy-Riemann equations. So here's the first Cauchy-Riemann equation. It's written the other way around from what I, the way that I normally write it. I write du dx equals dv dy. Well, we got du dx before. We saw that it's equal to 2x. Differentiate this with respect to x gives us 2x. So uh, function v, the conjugate harmonic function, has to have the property that dv dy equals du dx. So dv dy must also equal 2x. And uh, if we integrate 2x with respect to y, we get 2xy plus a function of x. Well, this should be x, actually, because um, if we're differentiating this with respect to x, or sorry, with respect to y, if we differentiate this with respect to y, uh, we want a constant of integration um, to give us 0. So um, if we differentiate a function of x with respect to y, we get 0. All right, so... Um, so v must look like this. Now what about um, the second Cauchy-Riemann equation? Well, as I've explained before, we just interchange x and y here in the denominator and put a minus sign in front of one of the derivatives. Now, du dy is something that we've already got. Um, if you differentiate u with respect to y, uh, we get minus 2y minus 2. If we stick a minus sign in front, we get plus 2y plus 2. So our function v has to satisfy this equation, dv dx equals 2y plus 2. So we integrate this with respect to x. So this is just all a constant. So that gives us 2xy plus 2x. We multiply x by it. And then we have to have a function of y, because the derivative of a function of y with respect to x is 0. So we see that 2xy must appear and 2x must appear. So 2x is our function of x and our function of y can just be a constant, just a number, c. So now both expressions for v will look the same uh, if we have this here. Well, if we, if we add in the c as well here, of course. But the number c is, can be thought of as a function of x. So if you're not sure, you can always check, uh, just get the derivatives. Check that dv dy is 2x, and check that dv dx is 2y plus 2. Now we can get f of z, we can get the analytic function. Um, z is x plus i y, and that's equal to u, which is this here. I'm sorry, it's this here. Looking at question 3, x squared minus y squared minus 2y. And here's v. So this thing here is u. And uh, we have i times v, or v times i, whatever. So v is this here, 2xy plus 2x plus the constant, I'd call that constant c. Now notice that we have x squared minus y squared plus 2xyi appearing. And we know that that's just um, x plus iy squared. And we can write this as z squared. So we have x squared minus y squared plus 2xyi. And what about what's left? Well, we can factorize the 2 out. Well, I factorize minus 2 out of this, actually. What if, What's this thing here? How can we write this in terms of z? Well, this is actually uh, minus i times z, if you think about it. Minus i times x plus 
i y so we get the minus x i and then we get minus i squared y um, well minus i squared is minus minus one or plus one so we get the plus one so now you see we can write this as f of z equals this is z squared and then we have my uh we take the minus i out of this in, into the minus two so that gives plus two i times z plus c times c is just a number c times i we just call it d 